Today I'm going to talk to you about how hospitals overcharge their patients. And this has been something that's been on my mind for a long time. I know a lot of people have experience with this and I just wanted to share my experience as like a patient or someone going to the hospital or, and also just working as a hospital employee. I would say about five years ago, I took my son to the hospital. It ended up being like a really easy fix. So what they did is the ER physician, they just like pronated and supinated his hand and that pretty much completely solved the issue. Um, he didn't have any pain afterwards, but the problem is he still wanted to do the x-rays and we were kind of like, why are we still doing the x-rays? And it was an awful experience. My son was, he was probably like two years old at the time. He did not want to stay still. They didn't even get good x-rays. It was kind of like a miserable experience and then also radiation exposure to him. About a month later, we get this hospital bill for $15,000 for just a simple visit to the emergency department. And so we were like completely shocked. At the time we didn't have insurance, but we had like this Christian health sharing uh, ministry that we were part of. So they would pay whatever healthcare needs that we had. But we were like so shocked this $15,000 was on us. And it took me months and months and months to negotiate the rate and finally get it down. I wanna say I finally got it down to like 2,000 or 3,000 dollars from 15,000. And what I had to actually say, I had to say that they were overcharging us and they were billing us for things that were not necessary. And that included the x-rays that really didn't need to be done, especially after the problem, like the physician fixed the arm and then he did x-rays after. So I had to really like spend a ton of time they had to have this big council meeting, they said, with the hospital. And so that's kind of why I wanted to share this for just anyone who doesn't have insurance or anyone who um, just feels like they're being overcharged by their hospital. So the first thing I want to talk about is just overbilling in general. So I would say that almost all hospitals are gonna overbill and overcharge you. And the reason for that is because there are so many missed costs. Like there are missed costs when there's like a homeless person that comes in the hospital, the hospital is not gonna really get any money for that except for writing like tax write-offs, okay? Um, so there, anyone that is homeless or an immigrant or like an like an inmate, they're not really making a ton of money off that cell. There are contracts with like prisons and things like that, but the hospitals aren't, they're trying to gather as much money as they possibly can. You have to think about it as like not a company that's trying to do good. You have to think about it as a business. They're trying to make money and as much money as possible. And so if you're going in there without insurance or you don't really know like what you're doing, what the cost might be, you really can easily get overcharged for a lot of things that are not necessary. And that could be like medication, that could be extra IVs, that could be x-rays that aren't really necessary. And I would say most healthcare professionals are actually encouraged to overbill. If I work in the therapy, therapy department, if you are a speech therapist, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a lot of times your manager or your director is encouraging you to bill more because they have to meet it's kind of like you have to meet a quota. They expect you to get a certain amount of units per day. And if they don't get those, if they don't meet those units, um, a lot of times like someone's gonna talk to you or someone's gonna encourage you to do better. I feel like it's not like this in every setting, but there, the majority of settings that I've worked in, working, especially if you work at like a skilled nursing facility, they're really gonna push units and you have to make sure that you hit those units all the time. And I feel like a lot of employees will actually overbill or they will say that they spent more time than they actually did with a patient just so they can meet that quota for the day. And the problem with that is you're just overbilling these patients. And maybe the employee thinks like, oh, it doesn't really matter. This person has insurance. Insurance is gonna cover that. But a lot of times insurance only covers a certain part and the patient is responsible to pay 20% of that coinsurance, or maybe they don't have insurance at all and they have to pay that full medical bill. So that's where it really becomes an issue. And I've seen doctors before where they could bill like a lower level of like an evaluation, but they end up billing like a higher complex evaluation when they only spent like a few minutes with me. And so doctors, they're encouraged as well to overbill and to add on all these extra bills when a lot of times those aren't needed. When I had that visit with my son that 
the, the bill was $15,000, there was all these extra bills tacked on that weren't needed. His diagnosis was, they didn't have a diagnosis for a nursemaid elbow, so they actually billed it at something that was a much more expensive and higher billing code, and it wasn't even the diagnosis that my son had. So a lot of, a lot of times, just the diagnostic code for what the hospital or whatever place is billing you for, a lot of times that diagnostic code is way more expensive and it's not even the correct diagnostic code for what you were there for. Now, if you go to a hospital, a lot of times they'll say that their costs are up front and they have all of the costs listed on their website, but most of the codes on the website are impossible for anyone to understand. So if I, if I know I'm gonna have, a, like my wife's gonna have a baby or if, if I know I'm gonna go for a procedure, I can go on the hospital's website supposedly on their main website, they're supposed to have a list of every diagnostic code, but you go and you look at these codes and they're impossible to read, they're impossible to understand. And a lot of times there's hidden costs in there that you're not gonna see. So that's something that you just need to know before you go to a hospital. Um, we actually, we had a baby uh, seven years ago and we went to the hospital and they said, since you don't have insurance, here is the non-insurance rate, which was really cheap. It was only like $2,000 or $2,500 to have a baby. And so we were like, oh, this is great. Um, this is gonna be super cheap. And before we had the baby, we actually went in because we, we thought we were having a baby, but it ended up being a false alarm. That visit was more expensive than actually having the baby. And all we did is we went in and we had pain meds and they probably did some ultrasound. They didn't do anything else. And it was also surprising too, because be, because after we had the baby, we were billed that $2,000 that the hospital charged for having a baby, but they didn't include all the other fees with all the other doctors that were involved, like the anesthesiologist. And, and so it's not, like the costs a lot of times aren't upfront. They may say, this is the cost to have a baby, but they don't include all these other charges and any other doctor that's gonna work with you. So think about it this way. Every time you see a doctor, you're going to pay a huge bill for that doctor alone. And so that's something that you just need to be con like consider before saying like, oh yeah, bring the cardiologist on. We wanna see um, the orthopedic surgeon. We wanna see all these people. So anytime you bring on another doctor, you're gonna have to pay for their fee as well. And another thing to know is that everything in the hospital has a fee. The minute you walk in the door, you are charged. So if you go in a hospital, say you go for an emergency visit, like you like hurt your elbow or something like that, you go into the hospital and say like the wait time is just insane, you don't have time to wait and you already talked to the nurse, but you like, you have something and you have to go pick up your kid from school or something like that. This just happened to me yesterday. Um, what will happen is they will still charge you for that emergency visit, even though you didn't even talk to a doctor, because the minute you walk in the door, if you talk to a nurse, there's a bill for that. If you have x-rays done, there's a bill for that. So there's a bill for everything. If you have an IV hanging, there's a bill for that. And a lot of times you don't even need an IV. So there's all these unnecessary costs that you're going to be charged. And so that's why I think a lot of times it's okay to refuse things when you're in the hospital. And another thing I wanna talk about, so this is kind of weird. So I just had this experience the other day. We went to the hospital and we had x-rays before we even saw the doctor. And usually you see the doctor, the doctor looks at the arm or whatever and says, okay, I want x-rays of this. But this time they just sent us to the x-ray tech and they said, where are you having pain? And they did x-rays. And I thought this was really weird that they would do it like this because you're not even having a doctor tell them where to have the x-ray done. And so what ended up happening is we went to the ER and then a few days later we had to go to the ER again because we had to x-ray another part of the arm that wasn't x-rayed. And if we had left the hospital before seeing the, the doctor, that's just another way we would be overcharged. We would have these x-ray charges when we didn't even see a doctor. Okay, another way that hospitals overcharge you is there's kind of like this whole feeling in the hospital, it's very discouraged to leave against medical advice. And in most cases, you probably don't need to leave in, against medical advice, but there are some instances where 
I would leave AMA. The more you understand your condition and the more you understand why this person wants you to go to that facility or get this procedure done, that's really gonna help you understand if you should um, follow their advice or if you should leave against medical advice. Okay, another way that hospitals overcharge you is just placement issues. If there is not an accepting facility, or sometimes it takes a case manager like two, three, four days just to find a rehab facility that will accept you. If you do the work for them, if you call the facility, if you get everything set up, and if you contact the case manager, sometimes that can get things moving faster. If you have an advocate, a family member or a friend that's helping you, that's going to get push things faster. Because if you're just a patient and you're laying in the bed, you're a lot more vulnerable in a hospital and people will take advantage of you and they will go at a slower pace. If you have someone that's advocating, people will go much faster because they wanna get you out of there because they don't wanna deal with that person that's kind of constantly nudging them and, and prodding them and trying to get things moving. They don't wanna be around that that frustrating and irritating environment. It's kind of uncomfortable for them. So if you have a patient advocate, like that's something that can really help get things moving. Now, another way that hospitals overbill you, so is, is just through insurance. So if you have insurance, um, just the other day we had a hospital bill for $1,800 and we have insurance and that was negotiated to $380. If the hospital bill can be negotiated down to $380, that I think is proof that hospitals just overcharge people. And if you are, if you don't have insurance and you negotiate that bill to $380, I can tell you it's going to be near impossible to get it that low. You might be able to get it down to a thousand, you might be able to get it down to 800 or 500, but most people won't even try. And it's just another way that you're gonna be overbilled and overcharged unless you're really good at negotiating. And this is also really frustrating because if you're homeless, you don't have a hospital bill. If you are a prisoner or you are in jail or you are an illegal alien, there's no hospital bill. You don't have to pay for anything. But the people that are poor, the people that don't have health insurance or health coverage, those are the ones that are penalized. Those are the ones that are paying a lot more money. Um, those are the ones that are gonna be overbilled. If you are middle class, it really all comes down to a hospital is a business and they're going to charge as much money as they can possibly get out of you. And so if you are a good negotiator, that can help. But if you have insurance, you really can't, there's not a whole lot you can do because the insurance is going to negotiate with them and you can't really get in the way there. Now, what you can do is if you see a charge that is something that, that shouldn't have been, been charged, if there's a diagnostic code that like you never had that diagnosis, then that's something that you can talk to your insurance about and say, look, you need to fix this because I shouldn't have been charged that amount. And that's one way you can get the hospital bill down, but that's something you will want to act on in a timely manner because if you don't get things done quickly, you're gonna start getting those collection bills. Okay, so I mentioned a lot of different ways that hospitals overcharge you today. Um, how can you fix it? How can you minimize those costs? I've already kind of talked about that. It's about learning how to negotiate. Think of what you wanna pay for that hospital bill and you wanna keep talking to them until you can get that bill down. Um, you may have, in the meantime, collection checks coming, but you, a lot of times you can talk to the collection agency saying that you're still trying to talk to the hospital and working on negotiating the bill and sometimes they can um, prolong that period for you to have to pay that whatever collection fee that they have. And along these lines, don't be afraid to refuse things that aren't really medically necessary. So one thing that people do in the, or physicians do or nursing does constantly in the hospital is they're constantly asking about your pain levels. And if you're in pain, they're gonna give you pain meds. Well, you don't always need pain medications. A lot of times people that go to the ER, they're having pain, but it's not significant. You can refuse those pain meds. You can refuse an IV. You can refuse a lot of things that you don't think that you really need. I'm not giving medical advice, but I would say in some circumstances, you just have to decide on your own, do I really need this service? So it's my goal as a healthcare practitioner to not overcharge, to not overbill. I think that we need to bill people honestly and be fair and do the best we can. So we're empowering the patient and we're helping patients, especially those that can't afford healthcare. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. Thanks.